Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see you. So today we are at Slope Point, which is the furthest south on the mainland of South Island. And there it is, basically. So it's about a 20 minute walk, they say, but I think it's 10 one way, 10 the other, to the car park. And um, obviously, lots of people come visit. We've picked up a hitchhiker, his name's Mathias. <laughs> and he's from France, obviously the name would tell you that probably. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go here, and then we're gonna go out to Curio Bay and see what that's all about. But this will be the first time we've seen the ocean properly for a few days, because obviously we was at an inlet. And what a beautiful day it is too. So Mathias, what has been your highlight of New Zealand so far? Oh my I like um, to be in the mountain, to do a trek in the mountain and to be in a hut with a fireplace. Oh nice. And to see all the glaciers all over me. Yeah. And I've been like this alone for three days. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> oh bless you. That sounds marvellous. So Matthias is backpacking and farming a lift. Obviously we picked him up and that's one way that you can travel around New Zealand if you want a smaller budget or if that's the way you just want to travel. So we'll see you in a bit. There we go. Look at this guy. Wow. What ocean is this again Kev? The Tasman Sea is it still? Uh, no. No? This, this... no yeah, I think this is the ocean. Okay. Look at this guys. Health and safety, New Zealand style. <laughs> you can't get over to the field, but you can cut off the cliff. Whoa, look at that. That looks pretty awesome. Look how clean that looks. What a beautiful kelp showing you how rich, vibrant the water is. Come alive. We might even see a seal while we're here, if we look hard enough. Just absolutely fantastic. Such a beautiful spot. Ooh. And you can see how far the tide has come up to. Absolutely stunning. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. I think so. We could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand So, as you can see, the dolphins are swimming near the people They do like to interact with you experienced this ourselves at um, Goat Island. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they're definitely Hector's dolphins. Turn up by the round feet. swimming in the surf, look. I've just got that kid. Oh, cool. You have real four of them in the surf. I'd love to be on the rock securely, happily and safe, obviously, but whoa, I'd love that. Yeah, the countryside is 
All right.
this is one of this is uh, Highway 92. Go and look at that. Now, some people might tell you that it's because the car's full of chemicals, but in reality, it's because it's full of ice, and the ice crystals are diffracting the sun, giving you the rainbow colours in the same way that rain gives you rainbow colours. That's it. And if the angles were different, you'd be able to see the full colours of the spectrum. How cool is that? We come down here to go to the blowhole and on the beach we have a sea lion. I think it's a sea lion. I don't know what the difference between sea lions and seals are. Either way, we're having a dust up over the beach. Sea lions are just like, oh, too knackered, we played for too long. I just want to put my feet in the water, I haven't been in the ocean for quite some time. Oop. Oh. I don't even think here, but the way the water's going up, I think the tide's coming out, I think we're going to have to go up to the blowhole. Here it comes! Woo! Woo! Whoa! That's cold! That is cold! <laughs> that is cold. That is cold. It's nice, isn't it? So what we track, Kevin, Kevin thinks it's um, going out, but I'm, I'm not sure, you know. So we're on the way up to the Jack's blowhole. Um, it's getting very near lunch time, dinner time, food time, whatever. So Willow's staying back, she's cooking the food, and I'm going up to see the blowhole. It's about a 20 minute walk. You know what, let's be adventurous and go over the steps. Don't know, not sure. So, the blowhole is quite a long way um, from the sea. About 200 meters, I think it said. So it's only blowing at high tide and if we both waited until we'd had something to eat then it wouldn't be high tide it's not really high tide now the tide's going out so Willow's doing dinner I get to walk up to the blowhole and hopefully I might see something because a blowhole that ain't blowing is just a hole and at low tide there ain't even any water at the bottom apparently so I reckon we must be about halfway. So we're parked down there. And we're going down there. So 
So the wind's a bit gusty. Put the strap on me out. Not a bad view. So, as you know, New Zealand's a mixture of volcanic rock, basalt, really, really hard, and sedimentary rock. Um, I'm not gonna say what it is, but some of the cliffs looked a bit, a little bit white back there, so chalk maybe, limestone in any case. So what happens is, back in the day, a few million years ago, no doubt, when it was, New Zealand was being formed, there would have been a couple of streams of lava and maybe even a tube. And of course that went out to the sea. Um, the sea rose, it was covered with uh, sedimentary stuff. And when the sea levels dropped again, it left a hole. So, as you know, you get a, you try and squeeze a, a relatively low force into a small hole. Like when you put your finger over the end of a hose, it gets a lot, a lot more powerful. So the water comes along, squash itself into the hole, enormous pressures and wears away when it comes to the eventual stop at the end. And if the stuff above it's softer than the stuff on the sides. The, the above stuff crumbles away. And you end up with a channel. If you've only got a little bit of soft stuff at the end, then that collapses and you end up with a hole. So the sea rushes in, hits the end, shoots up. When we say hole, by all accounts, this thing's quite large. So here we go, do not lean or climb over the fence, Jack's blowhole is 55 metres deep so you don't want to be falling in it, 144 metres long and 68 metres wide so soon and it's 200 metres from the sea so another 56 metres and it'll be a gully not a blowhole. They like to keep you in suspense don't they? Here we go, let's have a look. Well, I think that's pretty impressive. To get the full effect, I guess, it has to be high tide. Um, with a bit of a wind coming in off the sea, like a lot of wind coming off the sea, big waves, and you're gonna get that all the time. But I think that's quite impressive. Thank you, Jack. I could have sat and watched that all day. The power of the sea is amazing. It's just incredible. There's actually no signs around here saying you can't fly a drone. Mind you. I couldn't fly in my one because it's only a little one. It wouldn't survive the wind. It's funny how you notice stuff on the way down that you don't notice on the way up. What do you reckon, edible? I'm not gonna take the risk. I think they are actually, but I don't know. 
That's the problem with edible and poisonous or unhealthy mushrooms is that most of them look the same. Certainly in Europe. There's some, there are some that are obviously not good for you and they look like they're not good for you. But there's a couple that look like the normal ones and they're very good for you. Just saying, all mushrooms are edible, at least once. <laughs> there we go. What you can and can't do with sea lions. You know when you're on the telly and you see them talking about the kelp and it grows to 100 foot long or whatever it is and they, they take you down under the water and you see it just waving in the water there and the fish swimming around it. You don't realise how big it is. And then it gets washed up on the sea, the seashore. Good stuff. You could probably use it as shoe leather. It's huge. About that, you learn something new every day. <laughs> That's rock solid, so looks like you took some of the rock with it as well. That looks like it's only a short bit. It's really heavy as well. It's a real shame you can't park here overnight. Well, I just suppose if you could, then the old boy and his wife would be down here and you wouldn't be able to park down here anyway. And they'd leave loads of stuff lying around and probably a moan. But I'd like to spend some time here. But unfortunately, we can't stay. And as is the nature of park ups, if you don't get there early, you don't get there at all. So we're off to find ourselves a park up now. And there was one way by the dump station. It's not overly luxurious it's just a parking spot um, it's not something you do by choice but it's better than so hopefully the one we're going to is still okay it's still all there as i said it's not the best park up in the world but being right next to a dump station, hopefully it won't be too popular. So, while we were in Scotland, showing the pictures and stuff, people were uh, asking us whether we'd sleep sick when we come to New Zealand. No, we had. And now we're in New Zealand. It's time to ask us. You're on a piece of paradise and you absolutely love England. I think England is the best country in the world. The south of the South Island is for you. It is so much like all the best bits of the UK, isn't it, Cliff? Yeah. And it's so quiet, there's hardly any people, very friendly, a bit of wildlife going on. If you like dolphins, if you like swimming, if you like fishing, if you like boating, canoeing, this is the place for you, 100%. Well guys, that's it for another week. It's just flown by, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Um, hope you've enjoyed all the things that we've got up to. And 
hope you kind of like appreciate the beauty of this place and realize that it's so different no matter where you go so we would say definitely the south of the south islands very much like the united kingdom so yeah it's been good it has highlight mm. dolphins and the aurora and the aurora yeah exciting stuff yeah. so we will see you again so don't forget to subscribe please like, give us a like give us a thumbs up yeah that's the same thing isn't it oh yeah if you ring the notification bell you'll get to see the next one yep and the one after that and the one after that and the one after that Please. yeah and we reached 500 subscribers or followers on instagram this week so that was super exciting for us as well so thanks guys for that and we will see you again soon oh and if you are watching and you still haven't a subscribe please do as what like kevin says like you know just hit the subscribe button I was have come and find you. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.